posterized. When an act of brilliance is spectacular enough to warrant reproduction in a printed poster. In the NBA, the term used when a dunk leaves a defending player humbled, shamed, and exposed. Julius Rory to the basket, came up in one space. But which is the most spectacular dunk ever? Can one be greater than all others? KJ Chambers. Yeah. Oh boy. That is pure posterization right there. He literally vaulted. It was like a pole vaulter. Attacking the basket. That's what you call a poster dunk. The list of blister. Oh, he just took the gravity right out of the building. I just brought it down with a lot of force. Unbelievable. Monster dunk right in somebody's mouth. Too. Here he comes. We rock the baby to sleep and slam dunk. And that's stuff that you, that you don't see every day. Creativity at its best. Oh, what a move. It counts. It was everything you could imagine in one dunk. That is a bellwether to the rest of the league. There's a new sheriff in town. His name is Michael Jordan. Vince Carter just took the imaginary ladder. Yeah, I dunked on him. I'll dunk on his mama next week. Oh, I just threw it down on him. That was cool. Dominique on the plate. It's a garbage What a jam. He moving it. Hitch up on you. Look at you and still dunk on you. Tonight, we settle the debate on the game's most spectacular dunk ever. It's NBA Posterized on TNT. Welcome to NBA Posterized. I'm Ernie Johnson. We're in Las Vegas for the 2007 NBA All-Star Game, and later tonight, they're going to have the Sprite Slam Dunk Contest right here at the Thomas & Mack Center. But over the next hour, the jams you see have nothing to do with dunk contests. They're the greatest dunks in game in NBA history. Here's what we've done. We've broken them down into various categories, and at the end of the show, we're going to give you what we call the famous four, and that's where you come in. You vote on the most spectacular in-game dunk that you've ever seen. So you ready to go? Good. First category, the power dunks. And what better way to start than with a little chocolate thunder? It's such a sight because the glass went everywhere and Robin Jean was under the basket and he was trying to get out of the way. He was running and uh, Daryl Darryl was in shock. First thing I was thinking is, oh man, I got to get out of here. All this glass is coming down. I was like, he don't fail me now. I remember that was pretty scary because I mean, even when you see that in slow motion, I mean, you see all this glass just coming down. That was very dangerous. The game wasn't televised by anybody, but it was across the street from my TV station. So I went over to my cameraman to shoot some highlights and uh, do some post-game interviews. This is what's left of the Philadelphia 76ers backboard. And I know this has to be a disappointment to you and to all the fans. Well, Alex, I call for it. You know, it didn't have to happen, but that's Daryl Dawkins. When you look at that bench and you see the one guy jump over the bench like he was coming to the bench like he was in like a monster. Like, this guy just broke the backboard. I don't want to go near him. He actually wrote poetry based on shattering backboards and glass flying, Robenzine crying or something. Glass breaking, bump, bump roasting, rim shaking. Oh, what is it? Babies crying, Robenzine fly all. Oh, the chocolate thunder flying, glass flying, Robenzine crying, babies crying, glass steel flying, catch crying, rump roasting, bun toasting. Thank you, man, man, my MJ. The fans in Philadelphia say, hey, you did one on the road. You got to do one for us. And I kept saying, no, nah, no. Nah. They said, no, you got to do it. So I seized the opportunity. I moved in, attacked the basket, boom. And this one, the whole rim came out. So I had to get out of the way again. Well, if you see me, I threw in the past, and then I started sliding out of there because I knew he was going to try to tear it down. He was empowered by this, this whole this whole thing, this whole breaking of the backboard thing. And I think that kind of broke him into a habit because <laughs> he almost broke his back that time. He just basically pulled the rim off into his hands. I mean, you see it laying on the floor, I and mean, he just pulled the bolts out of the, the entire backboard. Um, I think after that one, I think he got the commissioner's attention. It was like, hey, this is the commissioner. And I went to my office tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning. I was like, uh-oh, Lawrence O'Brien called me in. He said, it's dangerous. I want you to stop doing it. If you don't, it's going to be $5,000 every time we do it. I stopped. He changed the way they build backboards and rims. Are you, are you, are you kidding me? Like, because of him, there's breakaway baskets. Daryl Dawkins is the, is the father of Power Duncan. I'm just one of his sons. Probably his best son. 
Matter of fact. <laughs> I had been traded to the Magic just before that, and so I was new to the team and, and just getting used to watching Shaq play. But when he pulled the backboard down, the entire stanchion, that was stunning. You know, I remember the basket just kind of going like this, and then this, the basket's like, hey, this, hey, 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 this little dude is too big, and the basket just folded. The thing that I was amused with with that is that Shaq looked back at it with amazing himself. I think he was getting the heck out of the way. A lot of times, when I go up, I like to hang a little bit and pull my knees up. So as I was hanging, I felt it coming down a little bit. And if you if you slow it down and see what I did when I landed, I was trying to get up from under. You know, I played against some tall guys uh, in my career. But Jaquil O'Neal is, is the only player I ever played against. And I said, man, that's a big SOB right there. O'Neal puts it on the floor. And stops and he brought it down. He brought the whole goal. He got power that he ain't even unleashed yet. The snap off the backboard the way he did, mad power. To grab it like that and to pull it over, and it looked as if that's what he was trying to do, too, because you could see the way he was sort of ringing the rim. One time in New Jersey, Derek Coleman dunked on me. I'll let you show that. Whoa, what a move, huh? Whoa, look at him. So I said to myself, next time we play Jersey, I'm going to rip the damn backboard off. I think he actually was doing it on purpose the second time. And he went in, brought the backboard down over Dwayne Schnitzis. And I had Dwayne Schnitzis on me anyway, so that was an insult to me. So I just went up and I threw it down, and I didn't break the backboard, I broke the whole thing in the back. And that was pretty good. I don't know that the league could have envisioned somebody that big and strong just terrorizing their equipment. Julius roaring to the basket, came up in Walton's face. Dr. J over Bill Walton, that was like flying right in your mouth, chest to chest, boom. Bill Walton was a heck of a defensive player. But uh, that day, it just didn't work out for Bill. He climbed so high. I remember Bill Walton could jump back then. And he just kept going and going and going. And bam, I mean, straight over it. I always knew any time I attacked the basket with Bill Walton back there, I needed to come with something, some extra, a little extra sauce on it. I know firsthand what Dr. J can do, and on a fast break, when he's got the ball in a full uh, head of steam, the best thing to do is just get out of the way. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be on a poster. When you think about dunks, he's probably the greatest dunker of all time. I truly believe that. Every opportunity, Dominique on the break, gets a jump. What a jam! Dominique will go and jump off two feet and curl, double pump, look at you, and still dunk on you. I mean, just crazy. Dominique had more, more funk. You know, he moving it, hitch up on you, and move it over and swing it on you. Well, I was more or less a power dunker. I always look for the contact. But even though looking for the contact, I still try to finish the play. Either make a layup, or if I'm high enough, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dunk the ball. Everyone likes dunks, but the only dunks that you remember is the ones with authority. Or you're trying to put somebody away. Bulls back by 10. Tate George with the hard drive. The oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, the Chris Morris dunk was, was interesting. He, he was a good dunker, but not a guy you'd think of automatically when you think dunks. Looked like a windshield on a car when it just sort of cracked. Chris Morris, you know, they got swinging on the basket, man. I hit it with sheer power. I couldn't swing on it. Once I hit it, it was gold. I look at the guys today, they doing chin-ups on the rim. Chin-ups. If I did chin-ups, I'd break the back of my head open. When he broke that backboard, it, it surprised everybody, including our television crew. They didn't know what to do. Ernie Johnson back with you in our Atlanta studio. If you're just joining us, you see the situation right there. In one minute, you're looking at a guy shatter a backboard, and then the next second, you're staring at Ernie Johnson. So, I mean, you talk about letting the air out of the balloon. Bull taps it once and can't make it. Charles looks like he's just determined to take over this game. Oh! Manute Bowl 7-7. We can't get the rebound. He's up there going. <laughs> so Barkley just snatches it, takes it coast to coast, and boom. For a guy his size and 
and just uh, girth, you know, a guy could really get up. So when Barkley comes through, you better get out of the way. Barkley's coast to coast was one of those things that made me want, want to learn how to dribble, coast to coast. Charles Barkley reminded me mainly of myself because he says whatever he feels and whatever happens after this, he got to deal with it. If a guy uh, took a charge of me, I would try to kill it. You know, guys today, I think, are so serious. When the game starts, you say, after the game, hey, man, uh, you guys beat Detroit. How you feel? Well, um, we made our shots and we moved the ball around and they were good. Team. Nobody cares about that. You want to hear yeah, I dunked on him. I dunked on his mama next week. I dunked on the whole team, and I got more for him. A whole lot more where they come from. Coming up next, we take a look at the most athletic dunks in NBA history. And still to come, it's the best of the best, the famous four. It was a nasty dunk, but it was real smooth. Because you see, he was tapping the ball, he was looking over at the fro, and he just cuffed it like, ah, and he just rocked it. NBA Posterized is brought to you by Autotrader.com, the smarter place to buy and sell a car, and by the new Air Jordan 22. They're known simply by one word names, Doc and Neek, Skywalker, Kobe and Vince. Not only some of the greatest dunkers the NBA has ever seen, but some of its greatest athletes. And not surprisingly, authors of the most athletic dunks you'll ever want to see. 20 from downtown this year. 20 of the... Oh! Oh! Vince oh, my God. He went up on one side like this, brought it down, and came on the other side and dunked it like that. And that's when I realized he was for real. That was one of the ones that really, I think, stuck out in everybody's mind. And at that time, um, everywhere you go, people were like, how'd you do it? What made you do it? Once he started to go up, and turn midair, I was like, well, what is he gonna do? And then, once you see the dunk, you're like, did he really? He didn't. All right, let's get the ball out and let's go on up. Shot clock, down low for Dominique. Baseline drive, Dominique, oh, my goodness! I think that's the best dunk of all time in, in competition, in a game. I mean, when you look at the situation of that game, it was 105-105. After I made that dunk, Bob Lanier, after I remember after the game, wouldn't shake my hand, wouldn't speak. He didn't speak to me about six years after that dog. He hated me. Dominique had a uh, sexy force. Cause he was he was real, cause he was like real, real sexy. You know, especially when he had like a little S curl <laughs> and the way he's in his head, he was real sexy, but he had a lot of force with it. Dominique was moving it out of the way of defenders to dunk it, which is so different and so unique. He's the, he was the best in the business at that. Yeah, that's right. Well, they were 12 for 12 at half. It's perfect, but not enough time. Oh, oh what a play by yeah. David Thompson. Here you got the small, one of the smaller guys in David Thompson jumping over their whole front line, catching one off the rim. I mean, he had his elbow over the rim. That was a pretty incredible dunk. He got the ball really high and just slammed it through and, uh, Knocked a couple guys over. <laughs> Dunked on top of a couple guys, and I think the coach got a little bit upset about it. Nasalki went right out on the court. He's got the Joe Harris upset. And I think Tom Nasalki was so stunned on the sidelines. He, he, I don't know if he believed what he saw, so he figured that had to be illegal. Well, now nah, that was terrible, Cody had on, but uh, before that era, he was cool. He was cool in the game, but right now you wouldn't even want to be buried in that jacket. <laughs> when you talk about the great le leapers in the history of the game. You have to speak about David Thompson, or you haven't seen him play when he was young and in his prime. Long run out by Kobe Bryant. Behind him. First of all, you got to remember, I'm catching it over my head. Then I got the president of mind to go behind my back with a man closing on me. Then I had to think about, oh, I'm going to go and almost go up and then turn in midair and dunk it behind my head. Come on now. <laughs> That's a basketball play. That's what makes it so much more impressive. It wasn't the fact that he just jumped over me. He made you look silly. Robert already threw me a long outlet pass. 
and uh, I caught it on the break. And I was just going to the basket, just trying to finish it, and uh, you know, he cut me off, so I put it behind my back, and uh, then went from there. If you watch the defender, a guy by the name of Vincent Yarborough, who probably is watching this show and is seeing firsthand, and his family is watching alongside, that he was nearly posterized, but Vincent kind of puts his hands down so as to avoid the official word that you have been posterized. Kevin Willis made Dirk change that one. Yes, he did. Good defensive play by Kevin Willis. Carter, oh! Vince Carter! I had the ball, and uh, you know, I, I kind of threw it to him, no look. Got it, did a 360 in one hand uh, the wrong way. Uh, and I never seen that. He did 360 the wrong way in transition. Tracy threw in the ball, and I was going through the lane, so I was going to do a 360. And as I'm turning, I felt like in my mind, I'm, I over rotated. And as I'm midway, I turn around, I'm like, no, I better dunk this to two hand just in case. Vince Carter has probably had five or ten of the greatest dunks we've ever seen. Uh, in-game action. Doctor tried to steal him. Throws to the foot race, and here he comes. Doctor looks for daylight. With meaning, he took that to the hoop. Bob Gross goes after the Dr. J dunk, and you're, and you're thinking, no way. Why would you even try? But, you know, you got to admire his courage or lack of intelligence, whatever it was. I noticed after that shot, there were a few fans in there who were, who were cheering for me or for my team. And I got a lot of gratification out of that. I was like, man, we stole some of the Portland crowd with that one. <laughs> Dr. J is one of the most ridiculous dunkers out there. You know, he's got the hands, he's got the, the length, and he's got the jumping ability. I mean, Dr. J first got to have air bricks and could change directions while he's in the air without putting his foot down. You know the thing that uh, uh, Muhammad Ali used to say, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee? That's what he did on a basketball court. Sean Kemp. Kemp picks Mark Jackson, gets the give and go. Oh! Sean Kemp was a guy who was out in Seattle, he's known as the Rain Man, and to see him with that amazing move right at Kenny Skywalker, a guy who had won the slam dunk contest prior, I, I think it was probably great satisfaction on the part of Sean Kemp. I was very young at that time, I was 19 years old. That was uh, my first major dunk that I had in the NBA right there was that. The one there at the, uh, at the garden, and uh, it felt great. It's going to the rain man to get straight up in the air. He got some monster dunks he put on some people, too. And he didn't consult with me about dunking. So I am the dunk consultant. He has to speak to me sooner or later to release some of these good dunks that we know about. Coming up, we'll put you in a state of shock with the NBA's most shocking dunks. And later, it's the best of the best, the famous four. Very seldom in actual game do you actually dunk in a crowded area. And he's dunking over two guys, basically. And now the dunks you never thought you'd see. Like the little guy throwing down over a big man. Or an improbable last second alley-oop. Even a slam by Larry Bird. Here they are, the most shocking dunks. Here comes Tracy McGrady to the rim. Off the glass, and it's dunk! Are you kidding me? You know, that was a statement playing against my old team. You know, Toronto sending a message. I'm not going to just show you up. I'm going to embarrass you. He actually going down the lane and seemed like it parted. He threw the ball over Rafer Austin, Austin's head and off the backboard. And he catches it two heads. So it was something that hadn't been seen. You know, it was just a, a time where I had the utmost confidence uh, within myself and um, got the ball on the break one time. And I saw it open and I was just, you know, like I said, I was confident and I tried it and it worked. <laughs> it was pretty impressive. So I had to steal it in the All-Star game a couple years later. <laughs> want to run they find Wilkins look out I think that dunk itself was mad because I just got burnt three or four times by Larry <laughs> and that was probably just a dunk out of anger you know I said give me the ball in the wing and the rest of you got to get out of the way <laughs> I was trying to figure out why Larry Bird jumped because it was Nick's rookie year he didn't know better and that was that would break your fingers like you would have your fingers broke if you really put your hand out there you know, because Nani's only dunked it, he cocked it behind his head. Larry Bird was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. 
no matter how big and strong a guy is, if somebody is coming at you full speed, they have a really huge advantage. And he went over Larry Bird, and Larry Bird just spun around like a top and sat down on the court, sat there and said, man, I, I just saw something firsthand that's unbelievable. Davis with a rip away. He'll run with Palacio. Ricky in the hole! Run. Well, I dare him to try that again. You know, now that I know where he is, I didn't know he was going to try to dunk it. I would have blocked it. You know, I thought he was going to lay it in, so I tried to take the charge. You know, but... He actually cheapened the dunk by his reactions afterwards because the dunk was good enough. It's kind of like the guy who buys a Bentley, right? And he puts TVs in the headrest and put wheel rims on it, and he and he and he cuts the top off to make it convert. Like you don't have that's a Bentley, man. You don't have to do all of that. Ricky Davis over Nash was um, it was unfortunate, really, because clearly Nash just never recovered from the shock. Lakers had several chances, and here's Larry Bird chucking down the court. Well, first of all, Larry Bird can only jump that high, so you know, <laughs> he must have been feeling awfully good. Game seven, um, the margin of error is very slim. You don't want to try to go up and get blocked and miss the dunk. He finishes the play. So when he does something like that, a dunk, you, everybody's like shocked, like shell shocked, like, what? Larry Bird can dunk? <laughs> and in traffic and in the seventh game of the World Championship. The comeback was one of the greatest comebacks in Laker history, and I've been through a lot of those comebacks, but I never heard the Staples Center and L.A. crowd quite so loud. And Well, that was the start of our dynasty. I mean, that's where it all began, um, at that moment in time. You know, I had it at the top of the floor in an isolation situation with Scotty, and uh, I was able to get by him. Once I got to the basket, you know, I think it was like she, uh, I saw him step up and plug the lane, and uh, you know, they took the body off the big fella. I was able to give it with the outstretched hand and he finished it. I've been waiting for a pass like that <laughs> a long time. So if you slow it down, you can see my eyes like, hey, you know, you come into the hole and uh, they've been leaving, leaving me all night. So if you throw it up, I'm going to go get it. In the background, you can see Phil Jackson kind of standing up on his tiptoes like as if to say, get up, Shaq, go get it. Well, we saw the defense come to him and just gave Shaq the loft to the basket, which was, you know, an exclamation point, and also a big, a big point factor that made the differential in the game. Pulls up in the paint. Oh no! Allen Iverson. Personally, I knew he could get up like that. What's shocking about the dunk is really how high he is. His head is almost at the rim. You know, Allen Iverson has—he's special. You know, at six foot five eleven, whatever he is. One, to make a play like that, but two, just of what he's done in his career, over his, his career, just incredible. Uh, incredible time and incredible elevation, incredible whatever you want to say. A rebound follow dunk by a guy who's basically about 5'11", 160 pounds. You know, over all those giants, pretty incredible dunk, and, and I remember being just shocked when I saw that one. No fouls to give. Miller. Gets past Kittles. Miller inside with the slam. Reggie Miller ties it with 3.1 remaining. We were down two. This is game five. This was an elimination game on the road. Once I started to go up, I kept going up to my shock. And you look at the tape. I got fouled. It should have been an and one. We would have been up one. We would have won the game. But they didn't call it as they normally don't. But, um, yeah, that's shocking because, like I said, that was my last professional dunk in my career. That was very surprising because you rarely see uh, Reggie dunk, especially in traffic. And, and those dunks right there are rare on his behalf, but the game was, you know, in the balance and, uh, you know, he went in strong. He was feeling so good that that's why he took it to the basket and dunked two-handed in traffic and then hung on the rim and looked at the man saying, oh yes, that was me. Coming up next, we get up close and personal with the greatest in-yo-face dunks. And later, it's the nastiest dunks you're ever going to see, the Famous Four. Guys have to have a creative mind to come and, and think of how to do that. Up next, 
best are the dunks that happen when the irresistible force meets the very movable object. The dunker is immortalized, the dunkey is posterized, and the crowd yells, In your face! Carter's got it. Carter drops. Oh! <laughs> Big finish! Big Carter! He wrapped it and then touched Alonzo and the air. I was like, hello Alonzo, how you doing? Ah, I just threw it down on That was cool. That was nasty. You gotta find ways to intimidate shot block. Unfortunately, guys like him, Alonzo Mourning never gets intimidated. He's just gonna keep coming. But it, it, it makes a statement, and the fact that he turned sideways made it a little special. That's one of the things that I always said to the guys. If you're afraid to get dunked on, don't be a shot blocker. You know, stay out and let the guy go to the basket and let him do act like he's in a dunk contest. So I was thinking, okay, I have to, I have to take the hit first, and hopefully I'm high enough to still dunk it, and it, it happened. So I think that's what the, that satisfaction uh, of that play uh, comes from because it's something I thought about and it actually came to fruition. Once I hit him, I felt like I just kept going higher and higher. And you know, he was on his way down, and I'm still on my way up. And I got him. When he hit Dikembe, he went up to another level. It was like he was looking down at Deke and dunked the ball. And uh, the, the face that I made was, uh, it was perfect for that, that kind of dunk. In that huddle, I looked at him, I said, Deke, mm, that was ugly. That's OK. I blocked more shots than any man on this universe right now. I say, yeah, but you can't wag the finger this time. I've caught some of the events, and they have caught me well, too. I remember the playoff against Toronto. He came in. He almost tried to break my hand. And my hand got caught in the rim just like this, and my skin came off. And I blocked the ball. Big fun, because he probably dunked. For that one dunk, he blocked my dunk probably five or six times before that. Long nice. way. And that's a mental dunk, much more so than a physical dunk. That is, I own you. That's an I own you dunk. You know, with the little finger wave afterwards. Oh, we did talk about it. And um, we went to dinner this summer. And uh, that was all about. He said, Dick, you remember I got you. So you cannot go and retire and say that I never got you. But you remember I got this on film. That's the beauty of basketball. When you got a good defensive player and you got a guy who's saying, you're not gonna get to the basket, I'm gonna protect this goal. And in the same token, you're saying, uh-huh, I got you that time, didn't I? Myers for Pippen. Oh, a fight ball! Scotty Pippen in the face of Patrick Ewing, who did not appreciate it. Ewing is set. Scotty is set. It's like, okay, let's take the elevator up. You and goes to the 10th floor, Scotty went to the 11th. That's it. <laughs> what stands out most in my mind about that is that uh, Pippen just steps over Ewing, and this really symbolized that entire period and, and the series of uh, magnificent games between the Bulls and the Knicks who really detested each other. Scotty kind of throws him to the ground a little bit. And it's almost like, down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. That's what everyone at home was saying. Down goes Ewing. Down goes Ewing. And Scotty knew exactly what he was doing, too, because to stand over him and look at him. In basketball, that's the worst you can, thing you can do. That's not nice, Scotty. That's not a nice thing. Here comes McCready. Oh, he just sucked the gravity right out of the building. My first thing was to just go up and try to get contact, draw a foul on it. But another part of me just told me to go up and, and, and dunk on it. This guy is 7'7", 7'6", 7'7", whatever he is, and uh, just make a post out of him. You know, this possibly be his last year in the league, so, uh, you know, send him, send him a going, what, going away present. Yeah, I mean, he retired maybe because of it, right? He said, enough, enough, you know, I, I can only be, you know, I can only be the Mount Everest of all these great jumpers here for so long. What was really crazy about that dunk is like, when you do something, if you're the opponent and, you know, the, the home team, if you do something spectacular, they never show it on the jungle screen. They never show the replay or anything. They actually show the replay on the, on the big screen. They just suck the gravity right out of the building. <laughs> I just 
attacked the basket. I turned the corner and saw him standing there and uh, accepted the challenge. There was so much hype about, you know, the guy coming from China. He had a big X on his chest. He had a big circle and a big bullseye on his chest. And everybody was trying to let him know that this is a different world and a different game. It's fun to dunk over seven footers. You know, once you catch him, uh, you know, one out of every 10 times or whatever it is, it's, it's always exciting. So, hello, Mr. Yao Ming. Welcome to the league. It's a great film. You can hear the whole crowd like, ooh, and you see your bench get off. You see your bench get out, they see they going crazy. You see the opposing team kind of looking a little weird, so it's always a great film. I think you know he didn't know how nice it looked from the angle. And then about four steps into the walk back to the bench, he said, well, that was kind of nice. He's like that guy, he started laughing. To me, the most significant part of that particular uh, dunk was Damon Jones, the dunkee, uh, who is right on the path of LeBron James, wisely ducking away. A, to protect himself. B, I would think, knowing where Damon is, just to stay out of the picture. One of the rare times he did not want any exposure. Coming up, we'll stay in your face for more incredible slams. And later, you'll get your opportunity to vote on the best in-game dunk the NBA has ever seen. mad at Cleveland for trading me. I was mad at Hot Rod for being on the other team, and I just went to the basket, and I saw Hot Rod, and you know, I just had one of those flashbacks of a little man complex, so I just went up and, you know, beat on him real quick. He told him, get off of me, man. And he's like, what are you talking about? You on me. You're telling him to get off of you, and you're the one that's basically bear-hugging him. The nerve of KJ. Come on now. I probably did say something crazy because I was so pumped up at the time. And again, as a, as a smaller player in the league, whenever you can dunk on somebody bigger than you, you got you to gotta drag it out. You got to make it last. I was hanging on the rim and making sure that everybody got a shot of it. Oh, in your face, Kevin Johnson. Oh, my. So I went up. I, you know, I crouched. I went up. He went up. We both going up. Then he started going down. I was still going up. It was like, boom. This is the best shot blocker of his generation and one of the best ever. Nobody is expecting Kevin Johnson to go up vertical on a king, Elijah Wan, and dunk on him and posterize him. That doesn't happen. Funny part of that story, though, is when I was at half court just jumping up and down, uh, I looked up and there was a king, Elijah Wan. He said, Little Mon, you got me, Little Mon. Real good, Little Mon. Don't do it again, though, Little Mon. So, yeah, that was, that was my highlight, my NBA career. Kenny Smith was in the proper defensive stance instead of playing that BS defense that he's known for playing. Akeem wouldn't have got baptized like that. So Akeem, when you see Kenny, smack him. He got you dunked on. I'm sorry, Akeem. I apologize, man. That's my fault. Because there's no way you, he would have dunked over you if you were ready. I gave him a direct beeline to the basket. I apologize with all my heart. I'm going to say I got dunked on. That was me. You dunked on me, Kevin. You ain't dunked on Akeem. That was in a commercial. That's what made that great. Yeah, didn't you see Chris uh, dunk on Charles Barkley? Nice. You didn't see that. I went something like this. Put, put the cape on, though, because I was like Superman. Oh, yeah, you were. Huh? Well, that was my first game playing against Barkley. And uh, I met Barkley in high school. And uh, Barkley was by far my favorite player. My friends were in town in Oakland for that game. Everybody came up, and uh, they knew how much I loved uh, Barkley. I was going to foul him. Uh, and he shook me up when he took it behind his back. Because I knew he was a, like a 50% free throw shooter, and I had made up my mind I was going to grab him. But when he took the ball behind his back, I couldn't get close enough to him to grab it. I had a poster at home with him jumping with me and both his hands out, like kind of in a helpless position. And uh, when I dunked on him uh, and got the foul, I looked up to my boys in the stands and said, now nah, what? I'm in the NBA. What could be better than to be uh, a number one pick and dunk on your idol? 
Swings it up top of the key. Bounces the ball to Amari Who flies in for an amazing wham, bam, slam. Get that guy a cape. He not only has the power, but he has the finesse and the quickness to uh, get to the rim very quickly. I'm a fan of his dunks and a fan of his game. It was a rush. You know, once once I dunked it, I got a, I, I got a rush. It, it was just an amazing play. Uh, and and if, if you watch the footage, my expression came out after after the dunk. So uh, it was it was definitely fun. You know that space he had? Because that was nasty. It smelled. That dunk was, whoop, that's. But what made it, like I said, what, what makes that is Steph. Because after the dump down, I think Steph kind of knew that he had set up the candy man a little bit for the dunk, and once it goes through, he sells the dunk. You love the dunk, but I love Steph's reaction probably a little bit more. They swarm him in that double oh, they do. on the baseline. Now Kemp going to the hoop. Sean Kemp was one of the most explosive leapers uh, we, we've ever had. His talent level was off the charts. And when he was in his prime, he could do anything athletic-wise. Sean Kemp will power funk. My favorite dunk on Sean Kemp was when he took a dribble and cocked it and cuffed it and threw it down on Alton Lister. And Alton fell and he pointed at him. The Lister blister, yes. That was a playoff game, and uh, they were we were giving out some pretty nasty fouls in that fourth quarter right there, so... What you seen was uh, a little frustration come out of me. So I used to tease the guys on the court, and I used to be like, hey, if you start that with me, I'm going to put you on the poster tonight. <laughs> You've seen the rest. Now witness the best. Stay tuned, because the famous four are next on NBA Poster Eyes. It was dunking in traffic. It was force. It was finesse. It was everything you can imagine in one dunk. NBA Posterized is brought to you by the United States Marine Corps, the few, the proud, the Marines, and by T-Mobile. Stick together. By now you've seen the full range of great dunks the NBA has to offer, but we've saved the best for last. A quartet of jams that are so good they actually defy category. Any one of them could be the greatest of all time. And that's where you come in. In just a moment, you're going to have a chance to vote on the greatest in-action dunk you've ever seen. We call them the Famous Four, and here they come. Oakley smacking Chambers, threw it away, two on one, KJ to Chambers, jam! Oh boy, he went right up on Jackson. I was a rookie with the Suns when, when Chambers uh, dunked over Mark Jackson, and, and what made that dunk amazing was it he literally put his knee on Mark's shoulder and elevated about another foot. It was like a pole vault. It was one of those things where I really didn't have time to try and stop and go around him. I had to just try and get myself to the rim. So I was able to do that and, uh, and, uh, and literally jumped uh, over Mark Jackson. He tried to protect himself and maybe gave me even a little bit more of a boost because I know I had to kind of duck and not hit my head uh, when I was coming down from that dunk. Mark Jackson's thinking, I'm going to show my coach here that I'm a team guy. I'm going to take a knee in the stomach for my team and we're going the other way. And you go, whoa, <laughs> where's that guy going? You know, a lot of a lot of great dunks get posterized and, and made onto, you know, printed on a piece of paper. But uh, this one was such a good one. Thanks to the uh, Phoenix Suns, they bronzed it for me. Thanks to Mark Jackson and uh, the Phoenix Suns, this one will uh, be looked at for a long time. Starts. Yes! What a move by Starks, who was able to sky to the basket. I remember calling that game, and I remember Starks starting with the dribble, and you wondered, where is he going? Because you see three bulls around there, primarily Michael Jordan, at Horace Grant. Baseline just opened up. And um, so as I was driven, I saw Horace Grant. I like, I got to go in strong. So I jumped with all I had in me and dumped it. Spent out and ran back down court, not knowing what had happened because it was just another play to me. And I was sitting right underneath the baseline. He puts the ball in his opposite hand, his off hand, and goes on top of all these people, slams the ball down, exclamation point, purred like nothing I've ever seen. The garden just erupts. Everybody's going crazy. And like I said, I had the best seat in the house. This is what it looked like from where I was sitting. 
That was a huge dunk. That's that's a tough dunk for me to watch, actually, because uh, we go up 2-0 in that series. And I think for the first time I'm going to win a title, and we didn't win another game in that series. I think that's the dunk that woke up Jordan. It's the only time Jordan ever got posterized. That is pure posterization right there. It's the only time Michael got posterized. I didn't realize that Michael was in the picture uh, until the next day. I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, I finally got him in the picture because he didn't have me on posters and videos and everything else. So uh, that's what my one crowning moment uh, against him. Jordan trying to shake off starts. Oh, what a move by Jordan! It counts! And the follow! Oh, I'm going back out. No, I think I'm going to go baseline. Then I'm going to jump up. Oh, you jumping with me? Michael said, I'm going higher and higher and higher. Bam! I'm like, how the hell did he get out of that corner? We had him trapped. <laughs> Uh, he was like Houdini, Houdini at the time. He got out of that, that, that uh, trap that me and Oak uh, put on him. Oak kind of opened up the back door on him, so to speak. And uh, and he did it so quick, uh, Patrick just didn't really have enough time to uh, react. Michael Jordan uh, loved to go against Patrick Ewing and usually got the best of Ewing and the Knicks. And I can imagine how many conversations have followed over the years about that particular play. That dunk is probably if not one, two on the all-time dunks in NBA history. We talked about Kobe when he makes basketball plays. We talked about Vince Carter when he does some things that it looks like he has heel on the end. We talked about Dominique Duncan in traffic. That was all those dunks encompassed at one. And it was like Jordan was taking on the whole team. He faked out two guys and then dunked on the Knicks' best defender. That, to me, might be the greatest dunk of all time. Worthy against Malone. Pass is deflected. Going to be stolen, I think, by the doctor. Yes, he's got it. He carry counts. Ray rocked the baby to sleep and slammed up. To come from the, the sideline, where you're rocking the ball one side to the next, and you got a defender in front of you, and the defender knew when he, got the, when he got in the air that he had no chance. That's one of the greatest dunks of all time. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do, but I was, you know, I was going to make sure the ball got in the hole. So I think I picked my dribble up pretty far out and you know just decided to take my step and a half and go airborne he's on the break so he can't think about what he's going to do instincts just take over it's just you have to have to have that in your game in your dna to come off with a dunk like that cooper said i was trying to get out the way <laughs> He and I haven't had a real good chance to discuss it, but I know I caught a few elbows and a couple of knees afterwards, <laughs> just just out of spite. But it, it was it was one of those shots for all time. Everybody else, you know, Michael took it to another level. Larry Magic, but Dr. J, he he put the heart in it. He put the heart in the body. You know, he put the heart in, it. and then everybody else came and just gave it the, the plunge, and then it, it started. But he put it without him. There's no there is no entertainment to basketball. So there they are, the best of the best. And now we want to know what you think. Just log on to NBA.com and vote for what you believe is the greatest in-game dunk in NBA history. We'll have the results later tonight before the Sprite Slam Dunk Contest. It's all part of NBA All-Star Saturday Night presented by EA Sports. And it comes your way next on TNT.